What is popping, guys? You got your coach of the Chim Chargers here for our Week 9 GBA match versus Battler X, coach of the Milwaukee Saws Bucks, and I do believe he is back from the dead, <laughs> according to his uh, storyline that he does. He does these like interesting skits at the end of his videos, at the end of his GBA videos, where there's like some kind of plot or something, and uh, I mean, I'm curious to see what he does for uh, for hours this time. But he brings a team of um, Swampert, Licky Licky, Como O, Mimikyu, Meloetta, and a Zerkatry. So uh, we are facing for the second time this season. Um, we do face everybody in our division a total of two times for the regular season. This is our second time for Battler X. And I definitely expect him to bring the Zerkatry once again, as well as the, uh, the Mimikyu, because those two Pokemon, you know, they're just solid threats, solid offensive threats versus my team. Also kind of expected him to bring the Meloetta because it is a Pokemon that I actually recently traded to him for his Cresselia. So I definitely expected him to bring the Pokemon that I gave him, <laughs> try to use my own tools against me. Uh, he also brought here a Como-O and I definitely expected that to come. It's a pretty big threat. Very unpredictable because it could run a multitude of sets like Dragon Dance, like Choice Specs, uh, Autotomize even. So it's very difficult to predict what kind of Como O set he is unless we can see that. So it's definitely important to try to scout out and see what kind of set that is as soon as possible or whenever he brings it in. Um, we also have here a Swampert on his side. So I definitely expected that because um, Swampert's just a solid defensive check to a lot of my offensive threats. So it is his only Stealth Rocker on his team looking at it right now. So I can anticipate that as a potential lead. He also brings Licky Licky, which uh, is pretty interesting. Didn't really expect that to come, but I guess maybe it's a great Pokemon versus my weather because of the fact that it has the ability cloud nine and that's just a bulky pokemon can provide some wish support so uh, it potential leads i could expect him to lead off with either swampert because like i said it is his potential stealth rocker it's only stealth rocker and he could also potentially lead off with his zerkatry trying to get off momentum with volt switch early on in the game try to scout me out as well as even meloetta because meloetta can also run u-turn uh, so you could potentially run a, a choice scarf set or even a like a spec set or something with u-turn uh, one of the one of those things it could be even pirouette um we'll see what happens here but i could i feel like those are his three potential leads in terms of my best leads and by the way this team is of course the, the six pokemon that i brought from uh or that i have from yesterday's billing video so if you haven't seen the video that describes the sets that i'm running um if you want to figure out what i have then maybe check that one out but in any case i feel like my best lead is going to be my empoleon it is a focus sash lead empoleon getting up rocks is nice looking at his team because he does not have any sort of hazard control and I mean, it's just a nice, it's a solid lead because Empoleon, it does well versus a lot of his team. If he decides to lead with Como O, for instance, then I can set up rocks. I have a Sash. I don't have to worry about uh, getting o code by anything on his team because I'm able to live with that Focus Sash there. And of course, the win conditions on my team are going to be my Lander Sterian because he does not have any ground switches because I took his only ground switch in when I traded Meloetta for Cresselia. And um, I guess there's like his bulky Pokemon that can sort of take an Earthquake, but it can't take repeated Earthquakes over time are his Swampert and his Licky Licky. So Landers is a really big win condition as well as Virizion, which deals really well with it. I have an SD Virizion set, so it deals well with Swampert, with Licky Licky. It just destroys everything except for, of course, uh, Mimikyu behind a disguise. So that is the game plan here is to try to get up rocks and weaken things with our Landers and our Virizion and pretty much just play our cards right. In terms of this game, I don't really see myself trying to uh, outplay anything. I'm, I'm just going to go in and... Uh, use threat after threat and see what uh, if we can just um, pretty much wear down this team to the point where we have uh, our win conditions in the back and we, there's no way for us to lose. So let's see if we can make that happen. Let's go ahead and cue the game and see how we do. And it is about that time. So uh, uh, he, he decides to challenge me here, of course, uh, with that nice Sandy gas shirt. Not bad. We'll put him back in the sand, of course. And he does decide to lead off here with his Swampert as I lead off with Napoleon. Anticipated that lead immaculately. And looking at his Swampert here, I'm like, you know what? I think this thing needs to go down so my Magnezone can freely Volt Switch on everything. He goes for an Earthquake, and I actually am max speed, so he has to be some offensive speed invested Swampert. And I do hang on to my Focus Sash here, holding on to that Sash, going for that Grass Knot. Not today, Swampert. <laughs> and it goes down turn one. So that thing, is that, that's just awesome because I got rid of a Swampert, which could have been potentially annoying for my team. And getting rid of that with Empoleon is amazing. Like now looking at his team, like I feel like I don't even need rocks. I just go for the Aqua Jet here to pick this thing off. I couldn't have gone for rocks anyways because his um, his Zerka tree is obviously faster than my Empoleon. He goes for a Volt Switch here, knocking out my Empoleon in the process. But we got off some big damage. I mean, we knocked out Swampert. We damaged the Zerka tree. I already turn one and two have been just going our way so far. He goes into Meloetta here from the Volt Switch on his Zerka tree. And now I can go here into my Lander Sterian 
which is going to be faster because I am a choice scarf set. Get off the Intimidate here in Casey's pirouette form. So I can go for the U-turn because I'm faster. He's still in his uh, psychic form, so it is super effective. And I can go ahead, switch out here, and go into my Alolan Muck, which is going to be able to take any hit, any kind of hit from this Meloetta because we have the Intimidate off. If he's a physical attacking pirouette, which he is because he goes for Relic Song, then we'll be able to take his physical attacks well because he is at minus one attack from the Intimidate. And if he was a special attacking set, of course, Muck has the natural sp uh, spadef to be able to eat up hits from this thing. So he's going to go for the Relic Song and then follow up with a Close Combat, which we can live because of the Intimidate. And now we will be able to eat up our Figgy Berry. Uh, they got the nice Figgy Berry set here. <laughs> of course, the classic, the classic MV Lord set here with the Figgy Berry Muck and just go for the Poison Jab, knocking out this, uh, this Pirouette form here. So we were able to get rid of Meloetta and that's nice. We're just getting rid of threats one by one. Uh, he goes into Zerkatree here. There's no reason for me to switch out or anything because I have Scarf Lando in the back. There's no kind of sticky situation I can get into because I'm not going to go hard into Lando because that would be risking it and I don't want to risk my win conditions here. As he is actually going to go for the Z move Gigavolt Havoc. So he's trying to get revenge on that muck from the uh, from the curse uh, scenario that we had in week three, which really uh, gave him a lot of trouble here. So he will be able to knock out muck, which is really no problem at all, because what I can do here, I'll, he'll activate his beast boost, raises his special attack. Didn't want to switch it either, because if it was Z hypnosis, then no reason for me to put something else to sleep. He goes here, or I go here into my Landers Therian, as he is going to be forced out because he does not want to sack his offensive threat. Uh, being circuitry so he's gonna go here into licky licky and i go for the earthquake because he obviously does not have a ground um, immunity or ground resistance so that licky licky takes it rather well i think he evied it specifically in order for him to not get to a ko and i don't see an item so i think something's fishy going on here so i do hard switch out into my magna zone and as you can see he goes for the counter so i made a nice prediction or a nice read there anticipated something uh, going on there so i decide here to go for the volt switch on this licky licky go ahead and switch out right here into my tech support Verizion and Verizion here is in so we got another threat in uh, another uh, win condition here with our Landorus plus our Verizion. I mean Landorus is the ultimate win condition because Earthquake hits literally everything on his team um, but he is going to be threatened here as he does go for the wish he's going to go into his Zerkatree of course being able to live my close combat and he can actually wish right back up uh, to a decent amount of health but as you'll soon see I, I mean I go for the close combat he gets the wish up and it's at an amount of health where my close combat for the second time will be able to knock it out. He did not recover as much health to get out of that range of close combat. So unfortunately, he will be going down here to this uh, to this nice Verizion close combat. And now he's going to go here into his Mimikyu. I figured it was more worth it just to go here for the Leaf Blade to pop this thing's disguise. Because Mimikyu behind a disguise could be a little bit dangerous depending on what his set is. Swords Dance set or anything like that. So I definitely wanted to get rid of this thing's um, disguise so that he does, I mean, he does knock us out, which is a little bit unfortunate because Verizion could have put in a lot more work but we got rid of the main two Pokemon his Swampert and his Licky Licky which Verizion needed to handle so we were pretty good there. I can now go here into my Magna Zone as I can go right for the Flash Cannon here and he's actually able to live this Flash Cannon which is pretty interesting because um, I guess now that just shows that he's invested in some HP and he goes for the Trick Room so he's bringing Trick Room back to the Trick House here and he actually goes for the Shadow Claw once again. Uh, well he goes for the Shadow Claw here and we can just go for a Flash Cannon and knock this thing out. But uh, I didn't really expect Trick Room again, especially after the whole Trick Room uh, fiasco last uh, last time we played in week three. But yeah, he's going to get knocked out here. As he, then he goes into Como O, which under Trick Room, um, it could be dangerous potentially. But uh, I just stayed with my Magna Zone <laughs> as he goes for a Dragon Clyde. I can get off some good damage with this Flash Cannon. He was expecting me to probably go into my Lander Therian, so there was no reason for me to switch out or anything because having Lando in the back guarantees me the win anyways. And he goes for an Earthquake now, so he did waste a turn of Trick Room there. Like I said, in the end, it didn't really matter because um, Landorus, like he can't do anything to Landorus at all. And Landorus literally wins the game in the end. I can go here into my Alakazam, which is a Focus Sash set. So his Trick Room will be stalled out by the time he knocks this thing out. I do dodge a Rock Slide, which uh, a little bit unfortunate for him. I can see him, he was trying to go for the flinch there. But even if he got, even if he got the flinch, uh, Trick Room would have worn out by the time he killed Alakazam. And then Landers came in and uh, would have just knocked out Como. Oh, plus this weakened Licky Licky. So I can now just go here for a Psychic. And um, I'll be able to knock this out in two hits. Licky Licky is a bulky Pokemon. 
Licky Licky is definitely a bulky Pokemon. He goes for the return here. That does pitiful damage, especially to an Alakazam. <laughs> pitiful damage. But I can go for a Psychic here. Knock out this Licky Licky. And that is going to be GG. It's MV. So it's a pretty quick, fast-paced match. I only really switched out one time. Like, there was really no reason for me to try to predict or anything like that. I just stayed in and um, attacked, sacked, attacked, sacked. And that was pretty much that for this game. Pretty much had control of the game ever since turn one. We knocked out that Swampert. That, that was the highlight, I think, of this game was knocking out that Swampert because Swampert prevented me from... Or I, I guess, depending on his set, if he, if he had Swampert in the back, could have been annoying. Or if he played it properly, it could have been annoying. But sacking it off turn one, uh, I'm not sure was the smartest idea. Um, but I guess he couldn't really tell if I was a Sash and Pulley on lead. But we did have Grass Knot. Um, which is nice able to take that out and um, I mean overall I think the game went well I think playoffs are guaranteed for us now I'm not too sure uh, let me know if you guys know what uh, what the, what the score I need to get in the playoffs is but if I am guaranteed then that's pretty nice uh, I think we're the first coach to get there for this season so that's awesome hope you all enjoyed this match let me know what you guys think of course Chim Chargers coming through with another W and I'll see you guys on the next one peace